You ready to start starving? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Here's the deal. If you listen to the show Mind Pump, you know that we get asked a lot of questions about fasting. And about, I think it was two years ago when we wrote our fasting guides. Yeah. We kind of wrote it before it got really popular and trendy. And now you see it popping all over the place and people using it for, uh, for building muscle, for burning fat, all these great weight loss strategies. Now people are attaching supplements to it. All the stuff that we, we predicted a long time ago. And here's the thing. I want to preface this uh, YouTube with this is that none of us agree that you should be fasting until you work on your relationship with food first. Using it as a strategy to lose weight or to build muscle is not a smart strategy if you still not have, if you still haven't worked on your relationship with food. That being said, we get asked so much that I wanted Sal and I to get together and kind of share with you guys some of our favorite fasting protocols. Now in our guide, we give six different fasting protocols but I wanted to share the ones that we actually use day to day so you get an idea of how we use this technique. There's definitely uh, a right way to fast and a wrong way to fast. Now fasting has proven, proven health benefits. Uh, it also has been demonstrated to show benefits that could accelerate things like fat loss and muscle preservation. In other words, uh, using fasting as a strategy with a good diet versus just being at a calorie restriction every single day. The fasting methods seem to show that they preserve muscle uh, better than the regular calorie restriction. So it's an awesome technique. It's been around for thousands of years. We evolved fasting all the time. So it's no wonder fasting is good for the body. So here are the three ways that we like to utilize fasting for ourselves. Now, I remember the first time I tried fasting, it was a game changer. It blew my mind because I was led to believe I had to eat every two or three hours to feed my muscles. And if I didn't, I'd go into starvation mode and all those things are completely false. They're all uh, pushed to, upon us by the food industry that makes us believe we have to eat breakfast foods and lunch dinner, you know, lunch foods and dinner type foods, and by the supplement industry who makes us believe that we need to have a protein shake you know, every 20 minutes to build muscle. So when I first did this, I was blown away that not, not only did I not lose muscle, I felt phenomenal. And the first way I utilized fasting, and still is my favorite way, is the warrior diet method of fasting. Now this, uh, you can actually, this is actually a book that talks about this particular way of fasting. And I do wanna say, there are different ways of fasting. These are three of our favorite, but there are many, many others. So what the Warrior Diet Fast says is that you don't eat for 20 hours. Now this includes sleep. And then you give yourself a four hour window where you're eating your food. So if I eat dinner tonight at 8 p.m., then that means I start eating the next day at 4 p.m. That gives me 20 hours fasted, and then I give myself till 8 p.m. to eat all my food. That's this method. The second method is the lean gains method. This is probably, I would say today, uh, the most popular method of fasting. Probably because of the name. <laughs> it, might, it might be, or I think it might be because it's a little easier to follow for a lot of people. So what people really have to understand with this is and the lean gains method calls for 16 hours fasted, eight hours fed, but really what people remember is that they need to eat all their food within an eight hour window. Well, That's and let's, so let's talk a little bit about the science. I don't wanna to get too deep on this, uh, this episode, but when you, uh, why, why these hours, why these times, and, and this is why we're sharing all these methods with you, is because if you read the Warrior Diet book, it's gonna go, it's gonna share all the science that supports why this is so awesome. If you read Lean Gains, they'll share why this is awesome. If you read Eat, Stop, Eat, it'll share why this is awesome. And all of them have plenty of studies to support the benefits of all of them. Now, the real benefits start to kick in 12 hours, give or take. Everybody's gonna be genetically different, depends on the last meal that you had, whether it's 12 hours or 14 hours. But once you start pushing beyond that, 12, 14, 16 hour mark, now you're starting to really get the benefits of fasting. Now most studies will show the longer we go, right. the more benefits. Yeah, and there's lots of studies that talk about real long fasts. Um, I don't suggest you try those unless you're being supervised and you know what you're doing. But I think most healthy people can do, for example, this 16 hour fast with eight hour window. Really all you need to remember with this method here is eat all your food in an eight hour period, that's all. So if you know that you have an eight hour window to eat what you would normally eat throughout the day, you're gonna naturally have your 16 hour fast with your eight, eight, eight hour eating window. The last way 
and this is probably of the three the most difficult, but I do utilize this sometimes, is where you literally eat six days a week and one day a week, you don't. Uh, you, you literally fast on that day. Now this, for some people, is easier to stick to because it's easy to remember. They designate a day, you know, Sunday I'm not gonna eat or Monday I'm not gonna eat and I'm gonna eat the rest of the days. I found for most people this to be actually more difficult because it seems more extreme. And I've also seen people try to make up for that day of fasting by eating a lot more on the other six days. Right. Well, let's talk about all the benefits. So, pervasive. benefits of fasting, uh, you get a boost in growth hormone, you get boosts in BDNF, which is brain, uh, brain-derived uh, neurotropic factor, actually uh, grows more connections in the brain. It's like... So neurogenesis. It's neurogenesis. It's been demonstrated for that. It's anti-cancer. In fact, uh, it's being researched right now as a potential uh, complementary treatment with chemo for people who do have cancer. Now, you've got to explain that because I think this is one of the most fascinating things. This is why I recommended it to my clients for a very long time, at least incorporating it intermittently. So I'm not a big fan of telling people to fast for a weight loss strategy, although fat loss and appetite control fall into some of, some of the benefits from fasting. But I don't recommend it that way. I recommend it for the health benefits. And one of those is, for those reasons right there, is that there are possible anti-cancer properties because you're killing off these weaker cells in your body. Those weaker cells are the cells that diseases tend to attack. Yeah, so what they find is when people fast, so they go for prolonged periods without food, um, that they get a lot of this cell death happening. But it's the older cells that die off, then when you start to eat again, you grow new cells back and they're younger and healthier. And remember, the older cells are the ones that are more likely to mutate or more likely to cause problems. Um, in animal studies, they've shown that a complete immune system can be replaced within 72 hours. They actually did this with cats. There are some human studies underway at the moment. So fasting, been done forever by m multiple cultures and religions. Humans evolved going for long periods without food. Uh, probably why it's good for us. If you're healthy and you'd like to give this a try, we suggest doing your research, doing your reading. We offer a fasting guide which kind of breaks down six of the most popular ways of fasting that we would approve of for most healthy how do you, people. How do you use yours right now? I mean, uh, at the, uh, personally, I tend to fall under the lean gains method and when I'm really trying to push it, I'll do eat, stop, eat. I personally like to do a 48 hour fast uh, once every couple months, okay. uh, but that's a little bit more extreme and I don't really work out on those days. So. so, and I would say I'm somewhere between a warrior and a lean gain. So I don't even follow a specific protocol because here's the way I look at it. Because I'm typically in trying to build muscle, I'm a, I'm, I'm a muscle guy, I was a men's physique athlete. So that's a priority to me. So if building is a priority to me, uh, fasting a lot is probably not ideal, even with all the great research behind the health benefits. If you're trying to build muscle, doing it a lot is probably not gonna help you out. It's not very advantageous to not be eating very many calories when you're trying to build muscle but it does have benefits. So what I will do is intermittently, I will throw a day in there that I choose to fast, and I'll try and push it somewhere between 16 to 20 hours, because I know that as the time goes on, I get more, the benefits become greater as I can push that time out. But at the same time too, I'm not trying to push a three or four day fast because I still want the benefits of trying to build muscle and being in that much of a caloric deficit frequently would not be ideal. It definitely is hard to get enough calories when you're a big guy like Adam and you're trying to eat, you know, 3,500 to 4,000 thousand calories and you have like a four hour you know window and that's my do that's it. my weight loss caloric right. so if i'm trying to build i'm more like 4500 to 5000 exactly calories, so. so it can make it very difficult however when you do it like adam's talking about even when you're trying to build muscle doing those fasts intermittently have been shown it has been suggested suggested excuse me in studies to increase pro, uh, the rate of protein synthesis actually making your body more sensitive to protein so when you do eat it you build a little bit more muscle. There's also insulin sensitizing effects, so uh, that could lead to less fat storage when you are going on the bulk. So the health benefits can still benefit you, just make sure you do it right, and like Adam is doing it, based on your goal. And I tell people all the time, like if, you, if this is something, like I was super anti-fasting, and I know Sal was too, we were, we were so afraid that we'd lose muscle, would fall right off our body. I mean, you, you'll feel it. You'll feel the difference. The very, the very first time I started to incorporate it, and then when I go to refeed and then reintroduce calories again, uh, especially when you talk about carbohydrates and becoming insulin sensitive, you feel that. I mean, there's a, you'll feel that following workout after you've come off a fast, refed the body, pay attention to how you feel. Excellent, now we have a very inexpensive expensive guide on fasting where we highlight six total methods of fasting. 
you're gonna find it at the link at the end of this video. Also, we post a new video every single day, so subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends.